starting like a hello, <laughs> hello. Thank you for your patience. We are working on this and oh, setting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome you again in the mighty name of Jesus. My dear husband is helping me. First, my printer didn't work and da 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 da. <laughs> um, but the Holy Spirit is here and you are here. He lives in us and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know how this is just, but anyway, we are here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for taking all taking care of all these details. Uh, for your anointing, Lord, we have no wisdom, but from what you give us, nothing, 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 um, because you are the, um, you are the vine, we are the branches. Oh, Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's pretty bright. My, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> we are here. I am going to be talking about, um, um, what did I say, redemption. Uh, adoption, redemption, and inheritance. And if you would open your Bibles to Ephesians 1, because it is so rich in the word there. It is so very rich. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And in fact, I taught it um, Saturday, too. I have some Thai friends that come over, and um, I didn't um, have much time to study, but I thought, oh, I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians, because that's always so exciting to be able to, to go there whenever I need help. Or Well, there's lots of Psalms and Proverbs, too. But I started out in the book of Ephesians 1. And um, we just came, and I took it word by word. And since they are Thai, they don't understand English real well, and <laughs> I'm learning too. But I came across some new words, and I began to explain it. And the first word I came across, if you can see in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has crowned us. Now, this is the New American Standard Version crowned us who has or blessed us um whatever bible you got could be crowned yes if you want to visualize you are crowned that's someone on psalm 103 who are crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies but here it says that we are blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ in Christ. So I just want to remind you and myself that Christ lives in us. Oh, he lives in us. We're grafted in. I'm going to talk about that more. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Or um, let's see, just chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So I had to tell them, you know, we were in God's mind before the foundation of the world, before Jesus uh, made the world, you know, because the world was created through Jesus Christ. He, he, he spoke the word, God spoke the word, but Jesus brought it to pass. That's in the book of Colossians, you know that. But anyway, we talked about the foundation of the world, that God had us in mind. We were a spirit being in the heavenly places before the foundation of the world. And God had a plan before the foundation of the world. Even when uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed, he said, oh, now let's see, plan B. What am I going to do? No, he had a plan all along. And we know that even before Jesus died, it was accomplished in heaven. He was crucified. Uh, he was crucified. And if the demons had known that, they would have left him alone because they are defeated. But anyway, before for the foundation of the world. And God didn't look down and say, oh, I think I need some Thai children now. Oh, I need some from this race and I need some from that. And let's see. Oh, I'd like a variety. <laughs> yes, I believe God said that. He's called us uh, from whatever nation or tribe you are in because we're going to be together. We're all going to be having one language and we're going to be singing glory to the Lamb forever and ever. But we were there before the foundation of the world as spirit beings. Some people say, well, you were there and you volunteered to go for this time. And I think I don't remember that. 
but maybe some children, uh, they do remember things like that. I don't know. But anyway, I take it for word what it says before the foundation of the world. And one of the Bibles, I, I have the New American Standard. It said he predestined us. And that's a big word. And in, in Calvinism, we talked about predestination pre, and predestined. But if I break it down, it means a predetermined course. Predetermined mean it was planned beforehand. Pre means before. Predetermined that God chose us. He chose you by your name. Knew what country you were going to be born in. Who your parents were. And what gifting he was going to give to you. All different, different, different. Predestined. He planned that you would be born in Thailand. You would be born in that country. And, and that he, he was going to... He's, he's going to equip you for this end time battle. And we are in a battle, as you know that. Okay. He predestined us to adoption. There's another big word, adoption. And I, I was able to explain that. And I'm sure many of you know what that word means, adoption. He adopted us. That means, um, let's go back to the Garden of Eden just a little bit, because I'll talk about that with redemption too. Like, um, you know, we were all made in the image of God. Like God's got a head, he's got eyes, he's arms, he's got legs, he's got feet and all of those things. So we were created in his image, his image. And he put his stamp of approval on Adam and Eve and he talked with them in the garden and he blessed them and he put his glory on them. But then he gave them a warning, didn't he? Because they were deceived they were deceived. Here, Adam was with Eve. He, he could have maybe said, oh, no, Eve, we better not do that. Remember what God said? Don't do that. Um, but for some reason, yeah, he, he could have known, oh, the devil, that, that snake has been around here for a while. I think the snake had legs at that time because he was cursed and he had to uh, go on his belly. But anyway, if you remember, go back there. Oh, but Satan took control because they disobeyed. But God made a plan to adopt us because he wanted a family. He wanted a family, but we were not fit to be in his family because we sinned. We inherited this sin nature. Oh, God, you see that in the children. I know that as a child. Oh, I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to obey my mother. I was mad. And things like that. But God was good to me and he never gave up. He never gave up on you. And someone was praying for you. If you did not have Christian parents, somebody was praying for you. Oh, so let's keep praying for the nations, the nations. Okay. Predestined us to adoption to be children. You know, some people say, oh, we're all children of God. Well, in a sense, we are in his image, but we're not really uh, the children John 1, I think it's 12, said, but whose many has received him, to them gave he the power to be called children of God. Children of God. Children. And then John said in, uh, what is it, First Pete in First John 3, oh, how great a thing it is that we are called children of God. So I just want you to think about that a minute, that we are adopted. Adopted into the family of God. If we just think of that, oh, Satan used to have control. And that's when I get into the redemption. Well, let me go on here. Adopted as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. That's a new American standard, and I got my, my Bible here, too. No matter what version you have, it's good to look over that and just think of the Bible. Oh, we are adopted into his family. And then, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Beloved. So I said predestined means predetermined, chosen. And then adoption means a release effected by payment of ransom. 
you know, if you want to adopt a baby, and we have friends that have adopted the um, child from overseas, and they had to pay a whole bunch of money. And I think, oh, what a shame. The government gets so much of that. And the parents uh, sometimes put their pits on, yes, please, if you're pregnant and you, you don't feel you can take care of that child, just put it up for adoption. Because there are many people that would love that child and, and, and be a blessing Oh, yes, children are a blessing. So then, uh, let's see, adoption I talked about and predestined. And then in verse 7, let's see, I talked about he predestined us to adoption. Verse 5, to the praise and glory of his name, freely bestowed on us in the beloved. We'll go on. Verse 7, in him... We have redemption through his blood. Oh, redemption. That's another big word that you may not understand because I've got people that turning in from other nations. Uh, I had a bunch of friends in Burma, Burma, Myanmar when we were there a couple, a month ago, two months ago. And uh, they wanted to be my friend. And I said, sure. Oh, I'd love you, but I, I, I can't understand you. I hope you can understand me, and that's why I give you scriptures. If you don't understand me, get out your Bible, your Burmese Bible, your English Bible, and you can learn quickly. Okay, verse 7. In him we have redemption. So I want to talk about redemption a minute. Uh, redemption. It's a release affected by payment of ransom. So, okay, uh, Adam and Eve sinned, so they gave control. Well, God released them. Oh, Lord Jesus uh, said, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. But a curse, but no, it wasn't a curse. But Jesus relieved us from the curse. He paid the penalty. He redeemed us. He redeemed and so I thought of an example the other day. You know, uh, what if you had a baby and, and the thieves came and uh, um, took that child, captured that child and took that child away. And they said, oh, oh, we'll return that child to you. Give us a million dollars. And the parents say, no, that's our child. That's our child. But I'll bet they might scrounge around and find some money if they truly love that child oh they might just pay even though the police say oh don't do that don't do that but that life that baby they love that child but that's what jesus did god had a plan to redeem us because we were captured by the devil and we were a slave to him, to his lies, that selfishness, that nature that we inherited. Uh, but God said, I want that child for my own. I made that child in my image, and I want that child. So he sent his son Jesus, and he paid Jesus, paid the price with his precious blood. More precious than silver or gold or diamonds. He gave his life for us as sinners because he saw that he could bring us to heaven, that we could come to heaven to be adopted into his family and enjoy heaven with the Father and all of us together in one language, praising God and seeing the angels and seeing, oh, our parents or all the others that have prayed for us. So he redeemed us with his precious blood. Because I was just thinking of an example. So suppose I was still, um, I was, uh, someone came into my house <laughs> and stole a ring that I had. Well, you've had things stolen from you. And I thought, oh, oh, well, I could go to the pawn shop and maybe they turned it in for some money. So supposedly I would go to the pawn shop and look. And sure enough, I saw that ring. That was the one that was stolen from me. I would gladly pay for that ring to be returned. I would redeem it because it was precious to me. Oh, so 
That's enough, just another example. A simple thing like that. You've been stolen, robbed. Oh, maybe some of you have lost your children or you've been, you've lost some money or you made some, well, we all made bad decisions, haven't we? And we've had to pay and we say, oh God, but you are a a redeemer, redeemer. I think of the book of Ruth. Remember Ruth? Oh, she left the land there because of the famine. And then she goes to another land and then her husband dies and then her two children die. And then, uh, um, no, it's not Ruth. It's Orpha, Ophra, <laughs> the mother-in-law. And she said, oh, I hear there is, there is uh, water. There's bread back in Bethlehem. I'm going to go back. And uh, Ruth said, I will go with you. And, and uh, the mother-in-law, uh, Orpha, or how you say that, said, no, 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 you go back with your family. <laughs> and Ruth says, no, I will go with you. But God had a plan, didn't he? She uh, started to uh, gather in the, in the harvest season. And then she had Boaz. And he married her, and she becomes is it the grandmother of King David? Oh, Lord Jesus, or is it Jesse? But anyway, he was the redeemer. Boaz was a redeemer in the bloodline of Jesus. She was um, a Moabitess, this Ruth, in coming into the family, and also Rahab. Remember. She made a pledge. She said, oh, I'll protect you. And they said, oh, well, you put that cord hanging out the window and we'll spare you when we come in. So anyway, God has a plan for each of us to redeem us. And that's what he did when Jesus shed his blood on the cross. Oh, he redeemed us. And then, um, I don't know how I would explain this, maybe not doing it too well, but anyway, it's like after he died, he went there into the pit and he saw the demons and he took the keys away from those, from the head demon, Satan, and said, I will take those people back to heaven with me. He released them. So he has the keys now. Satan doesn't have the keys at all over our life. We have the power to rebuke him and say, you can't have that. Or you can't have those children. You cannot do that. You don't have the authority. I am redeemed. And I'm sitting now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because I confessed my sins and I surrendered. I said, God, take control. I want to be your child. I want to follow you. I want to complete the destiny, the plan that you have for my life. Oh, and then he gives us that authority over all of those demons. Hallelujah. Oh, God, and I know that you want to see and you want to hear what's happening. I would like to hear what the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus and the Father are talking about. I want to know those mysteries. We're going to get on to this. Okay, Ephesians 1 now, I think it's verse 8. Let's go on there. Which he, and there's another verse, which he lavished upon us. Now, that's hard to understand when you're from another country. Lavished, maybe you have a... Um, a Bible that's in simple English or something, but lavished. Oh, lavished. And I looked that up in the Greek because it, this uh, New Testament is in the Greek. Lavished, it means to be over and above, uh, to abound. So God's mercy, his love was lavished. It was spilled over. It's like, you know, God has so much love that he, he, he just can't contain himself. He wants to give it more and more. And when people say, no, 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 then he'll go to the unbeliever and he'll go, would you come? Would you come? I've got so much love. I just want to, I, I am so full of that. I want to give. So if we can uh, just imagine that God has lavished us with his love. He's lavished it. It, it, it abounds. It is, um, he not has love, he is love. That is his name. God is love. So he lavished it. So if you just think that a minute. Oh, I am adopted. I am redeemed. 
Oh, he's lavished his love on me. With every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That means there is no lack. No lack. That devil is a liar. And I don't belong to him anymore. So I cast down all of that imagination. And all those wicked things he's put in my heart. Or in my mind. And then I'm going to love. And I'm going to forgive. I cannot do it, Father. I am adopted into your family. So now I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Any man in... Or is it 1 Corinthians 5.17? Pardon? 2 Corinthians 5. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So I have, I will have, I am having the mind of Christ. I am, I have, I am uh, uh, putting on the new man by the grace of God. Abounding, abounding. He lavished his love on me. He lavished his grace on me on me lavished in all wisdom and insight as i pray for that and you go on into uh, ephesians 1 oh i pray that the eyes of my heart are are open pray that i have the wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him my eyes are opened so anyway okay then we go on to uh, verse 13 in him in him this is repeated so many times in the book of Ephesians, even this first chapter. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance. So I had I wanted to explain to my Thai friends inheritance. Do you know, like um, we have, uh, you know, as you get older or whatever, you need to have a will. You ha need to have it all planned out. Uh, that whatever you got, a godly couple leaves an inheritance to their children or their children's children. So we have a plan, an inheritance. So also, God is giving us an inheritance. If we are his child, then he's promised us an inheritance. And that first down payment of the inheritance is the Holy Spirit. It is a pledge of our inheritance. So it's that Holy Spirit that lives in us, dear friends. He lives in us and he gives us a remembrance of all of those promises that God has given us. That's our inheritance. And there's so much more, so much more. We could talk for a long time about our inheritance in him by his doing, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, but by his doing, are we in Christ Jesus, who is made unto us wisdom of God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. His doing, he did it. He made us. He redeemed us. He took those keys away from the devil, and now we are redeemed. He paid the price that we are in his family. We are grafted in. In fact, I was reading in the book of Romans today um, because Paul is writing that, you know, to the Jews, they were his chosen race, but they rejected him, didn't they? When he came, his own received him not. They rejected him. But now in these last days, they're going to come to Jesus because of they see the miracles that are happening. They are coming to Jesus. And God is helping Israel. Oh, they have an inheritance. They're gifted, aren't they? I mean, they are gifted in the arts, in in, uh, in money, in wisdom, all of these things. I mean, you look at the Nobel Prizes are given to so many Jews, but they're not lazy. Uh, they're pressing in, and God is gracious, gracious. Okay, inheritance means to assign by lot. 
So I have it written down what our inheritance is for our three children. And then there's other things too. The spiritual things. Oh, the legacy that we're living of the, of the, of the miracles that God has done. The healing things. The, the countries that he's taken us to. The money that has come. And just the blessings of good health and that we're able to go. That's an inheritance. And you all have that too. But sometimes the devil says, oh, no, 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 no. That's for sometime in the future. That's, oh, that's laid up in heaven for you. No, it's for now. It's now is when we need it. In, in heaven, we won't need it. Oh, he has an inheritance now in this place for the inheritance. And then, you know, even as I was reading, because you, know, you probably remember Psalm 2, verse 8, ask of me. And I will give you the nations as your inheritance. That means nations are coming. But in that verse, it's actually God is saying to the son, ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. So I am a nation. You are a nation. So we are given as an inheritance to the son, to the son we belong to the sun, and God is working that. And also, um, I have a CD that I've been listening to for ages. It's by uh, Ryan Wyatt. And he said, the Lord appeared to him one time, and he said, Ryan, I am desperately hungry for my people to understand about the inheritance I've given them. And then he turned around and said, I'm also desperately hungry for my people to understand that I am their inheritance and what they have in me. So it works both ways that we have an inheritance in him and we are an inheritance to the Father through Jesus Christ. We are. And that's what he said. And I thought, that's strange. Well, even in verse 17, don't we talk about, oh, let's see, um, Surpassing greatness of his power to us who believe. And let's see, I pray that their eyes and their heart may be in, enlightened and so that they may know the hope of the calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is his inheritance in his faith? What has he given me? Oh, Romans 5, 5. He said, that's agape love. He's given that to me. I don't act like it sometimes, but I forget. But I can. He's given it to me. That's one of the inheritance, the peace. He's given you peace. Oh, be of good cheer, he said. You, um, in the world you have tribulation, be, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He's made us overcomers. That's an inheritance he's given us. Oh, and that we sit in heavenly places. By his grace, he redeemed us, all washed those sins away, and caused us to be risen again with Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ rose, I arose with him, and I'm seated with him. That's an inheritance. Seated? with him and then I'm able to hear and then I'm able to understand the hope of my calling it may change from year to year but I will declare right now 2018 is going to be a great year for our inheritance we're going to walk into it the doors are going to open and this thing that you've been praying for for a long time grab it by faith take hold even uh who's a, a Paul said that I think, let's see, let's see, uh, Romans 8, um, for the inheritance, lay hold of all of that Christ Jesus has laid hold of for me and for you. Lay hold of it. Bring it down. We don't need to keep praying. Oh, help me, help me, help me, help me. No, thank you. Thank you. Your strength is in me. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. You're holding me by the hand. You're giving me wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now the eyes of my heart are being opened, and I'm going to see into the heavenly places. Oh, for he said, oh, look not at the things that are seen, for they are temporal, but look at the things that are unseen, for they are spiritual. Uh, I think that's Second Corinthians 5 or something like that. But anyway, we, he, if he told us to look and to see into the spirit realm, then I can Whatever he's asked us to do, I can do. Even though it doesn't feel like it, he said it, so I can do it. So I just want to bless you right now and say you are adopted. 
into the family. You are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Satan does not have control over you anymore. Those lies, we cast them out. Oh, by the word of God, we have the sword of the spirit and we have the love of God in our hearts. And Lord is teaching us. Oh, we're growing deeper in him and we have an inheritance. Oh, a mighty, mighty, mighty great inheritance. And this love that he's lavished upon us. So I thank you for tuning in. We'd love to have you share this. Or um, yeah, if you want to email us, you can look at our website. Uh, we're going to get a new website. Remote Area Ministries, we bless you, whatever country you're in. God has a mighty plan for you to change your nation. And our nation is changing. We're seeing dramatic changes as we pray and fight in the spirit. So I bless you. Uh, I come against any pain, any sickness in the name of Jesus that you are healed by Jesus stripes you are healed. He had a will. Jesus had a will before he died, and that was that we could walk in the redemptive power of God. He, by his stripes, you were healed. He made a will that we can be with him. Even now, we can walk with him. So I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you, Jack does too. <laughs> God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you.